Stu Smith here going live. Happy Monday. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, a topic that a lot of people like to discuss, but obviously hate to admit or even consider. But it's about quitting or failing. And we're human. So lighten up on yourself, first of all. And if you have quit something in the past, you have failed in the past, guess what? You're human. Uh, let's start with failure. First of all, if you've learned something from failing and you moved on and you are now better because of that, that is a learning experience. It is not failure. Same holds true for quitting. I can think back throughout my life on several things that I quit. In fact, when I was a kid, I quit piano lessons because I didn't like them. Um, I quit playing the trumpet when I was in sixth grade because I was didn't like it. I wanted to play baseball. Didn't have time to do both. Um, and in high school, I was I wrestled the first two years. I didn't wrestle my next two years. Now, I wouldn't say I actually quit that, but I actually changed my mind and decided not to wrestle my third year, mainly because they had a powerlifting team. And I was like, you kidding me? I'm in the weight room, you know, 10 hours a week anyway. So I get a letter for that. That's easy. Um, and it was fun. But it screwed up my baseball, and I was a catcher. I couldn't even throw anymore after a cycle of powerlifting, so I quit playing baseball. So I remember that one. That one hurt me because all my friends played baseball. I grew up with them from eight years old playing on the same teams, and that one probably hurt me the most. And I remember thinking, I don't ever want to feel like I quit ever again. And I think that was my learning experience from feeling like I quit something and moving on and getting stronger from it and changing directions altogether. Or had I decided to later on to re-engage and try to play baseball again, maybe my senior year. You know, I could have focused on that, but I was I was on a path. I wanted to play football in college. Baseball was just in the way. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I love baseball. I probably watch 50 baseball games a year. It was just a fun thing to do. So, you know, having not played those last couple of years, yeah, it grinds me a little bit. But at the same time, it led me on to a path of where I am today. So you can't beat yourself up on things that happen a year ago, two years ago, 30 or 40 years ago, you just got to keep moving on and find the right path and learn from all of those things that may not have gone well for you, whether that was failing academically, failing physically, failing a standard, you know, I, you know, failing out at buds, quitting at buds, you know, whatever you want to do and you didn't do well in it, learn from it. You know, engage, re-engage, or change direction. I remember after I got out of the Navy, I was thinking, you know what? I think I may want to go back to school and become a doctor. That was something that intrigued me. You know, I thought about that process. So what do you do when you have one of those thoughts that interest you? You do some research. And then I researched. And I realized I had to take Probably another two years of undergrads just to get pre-med type of uh, education and then do another four years. And we just got out, just had a baby. You know, I was trying to figure out how much all this was going to cost. How was it going to work? <laughs> so there, it was a little bit overwhelming for me to even consider at that time to do that. and. I said, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm changing my mind and going another direction and went 100% in that direction. And that direction is where I am today. Work out, 
I write about it, self-employed for over 20 years, and I get to work with great people who want to surf. So that's my story on quitting, failing, changing my mind. In fact, I've, I've written an article about how failures can define you. Um, but it, it's not what you think. Don't let failures define you today. Let me see if I can find that. I'll put this in the how failures can drive success. Sorry, I misquoted uh, that one. But check out this uh, check out this uh, article here. This is my story, pretty much. Um, uh, and you know, my failure didn't stop whenever I uh, um. You know, went to join the Navy, you know, graduated high school and joined the Navy. My failures continued. Didn't make it on the football team, wound up finding rugby, failed my first fitness test, max my second one. You know, so there are things that are just wake up calls, you know, so treat them like wake up calls and figure it out. Get moving in the right direction, whichever direction that is. It could be a repeat of what you failed. Or it could be a complete new direction. So don't beat yourself up about it is the gist of this introduction to the live Q&A. So if you guys want to continue on with that topic, please feel free. But we can open it up to all type of questions right now and uh, kind of spend the next you know 40 minutes or so uh, answering these questions. So first question looks like it's from Stefan. I failed at something I'm not ready to quit. I'm honestly a better person because of it. Nice. See, that's the way you got to look at it. You, you really do. And you got to learn from those failures. It's nothing is wrong with that. That is being human. Lighten. We all need to lighten up on ourselves. I'm hard on myself too. So it takes a little time for me to thoroughly understand that you know, I'm human. Don't beat yourself up so much. So Alex says, uh, after doing your programs, if I do a back spread, I can fly. <laughs> okay. Well, that's one of the unintended consequences of doing a lot of pull-ups uh, and, and rows in those lift cycles as well. Um, it, you do get lats. That is true. Swimming, swimming helps build lats as well. Can someone get a criminal waiver for a misdemeanor and go to buds? Yes, I have seen that happen. I think I've even seen felony waivers too, but those are few and far between. Misdemeanors, absolutely. With all due respect, sir, I would not uh, picture you play a piano. Yeah, you know, it was just one of those things. I have several musicians in my family, so it was more of a... Um, uh, what's a good word to it? Uh, just see, just to see if I had any musical talent, and I don't think I did. I didn't enjoy it. If I did, I, well, I wasn't horrible at it, but it was something I didn't enjoy. Um, I will say this: you guys might have heard of my cousin, who is an absolute beast. Um, her name is Yeba. Her stage name is Yeba. That's, by the way, is Abby spelled backwards. Um, in fact, I'm going to uh, give you her Wikipedia page right here. She can sing. And she is one of the best singers I, I think I've ever heard. And she's done duets with Sam Smith. Um, she's won a, a Grammy. Um, who... Uh, Man, I can't remember all who she she sang with, but anyway, she's sung she's done a lot of a great duets. You name them. Open for Ed Sheeran at a concert. Did a duet with him. I mean, just crazy. But anyway, yeah, my cousin Yeba and her dad is a musician as well. He was like leader of a band, piano player, plays like five instruments. So it runs in my family. I just don't have it, and. uh even if I wanted to do it, I probably would not have been able to do it because I lack that talent. But it runs in my family. You guys check her out. She is off. She just came out with another album. Killing it. Killing it. 
So failure is an opportunity to try again more intelligently. I love that saying. Who said that? Did Einstein say that one? Or Edison? You know, how many times did Edison fail making a light bulb? I think many, many times. <clears throat> All right. Um, really good points. I like Jordan Peterson's take on when you change direction, picking something equally or more challenging so that you don't settle for, for less because of the difficulty. Absolutely. I think he has some really great points about working hard and moving in, in another direction even. Uh, Air Force week one was awesome, pushed me past where I thought I could go, but also felt like I am getting stronger rather than overworked. Yeah, I try to balance in there some recovery in there. I don't know if you uh, – let me know how you did on the mobility day because the mobility day is not easy. You know, it is something that is meant to be like five minutes of decent cardio followed by stretching, foam rolling, any aches or pains. But then afterwards, you have these pool skills that you have to do. You have to swim. You have to tread. You have to do a drown proofing sequence with swims in between. And that is really hard. And I found that mobility is a very helpful tool for getting better at your flexibility, your joint mobility, and just your ability to get into a streamlined body position, as well as a better kick, a better tread. All of those things come with that mobility day. So take advantage of it. Don't skip those. Uh, what are your suggestions for flexibility? Um, I just talked about it. In fact, I'm going to put a um, mobility day link in here for you. Um, in fact, you can call it whatever you want. You call it mobility day, easy day, recovery day, technique day, whatever you want to call it. Just do it. So check out this article for Othug, who just uh, asked about flexibility. It should open up your, your eyes to not just flexibility, but mobility. I would like to serve, but I'm not sure if I can pass the medical due to two screw implants in my shoulder via a ladder jet procedure. Don't know what that is. Um, do you think I should have the screws removed? I, you're asking the wrong person because if the screws are holding your shoulder together, then absolutely not. Um, you, you can get waivers for surgeries, even with metal in you i mean i've known dozens of people who have you know hands that are messed up got screws in them knees you know ankles feet so don't ask me ask uh, a recruiter but first of all i wouldn't even talk to a recruiter until you're crushing the pst that still applies then Go talk to a recruiter, see what that process is. It will require a waiver. Talk to your doctor to see if it's even possible to remove those screws. Um, you know, all of that's going to take time. My suggestion would be to, you know, don't even involve the Navy in that, your delayed entry program time in that where you're, you know, you're getting a surgery to get screws done because that's going to screw up your preparation. You want to be ready to go to BUDS when you talk to a recruiter, period. Don't go to the recruiters to think, oh, they're going to get me in shape and I'll be in, I'll be at BUDS. No, it doesn't work that way. All they're going to do is test your PST. You can be a perennial failure on that thing. They'll try to give you some tips, but chances are, taking a PST once every two weeks isn't going to cut it for you and you're going to not get the contract you want because you neglected to listen to my number one rule and my number one rule is do not talk to a recruiter until you are crushing that PST period how many times I need to say that I, I wasn't yelling at you van building software. I was just yelling at everybody because I can't tell you how many people 
I get that are failing PSTs into delayed entry program, ship in a month, and are asking for my help on the PST. You know, that's, they've never swum with fins before. They've never run a four mile timed run. You know, what is, what is up? You know, quit living under a rock. There's so much information out there. You can find something to understand what you need to do to be prepared because once you start that delayed entry program, you are on the Navy's timeline and they're going to tell you when you have to ship. And that may not coincide with you actually being ready to ship. <sighs> that's, that's one I have quite often. Yes. Mobility day was more than that than I anticipated, but felt it much loose after wanted to ask what you recommend if athletes get sick during a week, stuff is going around at work right now. Yeah. You know what? I usually just say repeat that week. If you miss, if you miss over 50%, just start week two over again. You know, even if you miss two or three, you know, there's no, there's no rule that, the six days of workouts that I have in a week that you have to finish them in seven days. My advice is finish that week, even if it takes you into half of next week and then start, start figuring it out. You know, day one doesn't have to start on Monday. So just keep rolling. Just remember, take a day off in between day six and day one, or at least a mobility day. All right. I think we got all the questions so far. You guys have any uh, any more questions? I um, tomorrow. Let me just remind you. Tomorrow we'll do another one of these at nine o'clock Eastern time, where I will share some videos. So if you do have videos you want to send me, so I can. Uh, critique them happy to do them on the show or if you don't want them on live uh, my live show i'll just do them one-on-one -on -one with you and i'll just email you all the uh critique issues maybe send you some links or something in fact you can go to uh, tiktok for my critique page Stu smith five zero if you don't like tiktok on your phone which i understand you can just go to the website on your computer and it's you don't have to download the app you just have to go to the website which is right here tiktok.com at Stu smith 50 you can see well over a hundred videos of me critiquing people doing the css and other skills um if you don't like that you can go to my reels at instagram same address as tiktok at Stu smith 50 and I have plenty of um, feedback for CSS video submissions, as well as our own that I do here locally. Um, my latest one I just showed, a wrestler, short wrestler, you know, young wrestler, probably 18 years old, and um, crushing everything on land. And he's my unicorn because he can swim. In fact, he just swam at eight minute today. And um, he's probably about five foot six, 150 pounds of just toughness and um, and can swim really well. So a wrestler who can swim does quite well in this process, though you don't have to be a wrestler. I've seen all types make it. <clears throat> So you guys got questions? If you don't have questions, throw a like in there. That'd be nice. This thing runs on likes and um, and questions. So <laughs> do one or the other. Um, let me see. What can I uh, chat about? So I talked a little bit about quitting. In fact, maybe I'll put in a, another article here for you guys to uh, consider. It's a... Uh, Quitting or not quitting, the choice is yours. So check out this article. It's pretty good. 
I put in a uh, something I call the IDA loop, the ITA loop, which is about identifying weaknesses, I, training those weaknesses, T, and assessing those weaknesses quite regularly and strengths, A, so ITA loop. So you guys might have heard of the OODA loop. Um, one of our guys created the IDA loop and gave a discussion on it um, a while back. And I thought the IDA loop was a great thing to share. And um, it's all about preparing. Quitting or not quitting, the choice is yours. And that, believe it or not, that choice starts long before you are being tested. Right? That means today you are doing things today that will help you not be in a weaker mindset or physical body that needs to quit or fails a uh, standard when you're going through any training. <laughs> So, Alex, I appreciate you uh, smashing your like button. No need to uh, crack your screen, but that's a good one. I like that one. So, Vincent asks, uh, I've been advised against going to selection in the wintertime because attrition can be significantly higher. Thoughts on that? Um, well, here's the deal. If you're talking about buds where you will be freezing cold in the winter, it sucks. Yes. If you can handle the cold, then you will be you'll be okay during the winter. I will say this. Um, if you look at Hell Week pictures, and I, I get a lot of pictures from guys post Hell Week, they send them to me as a you know like, hey, we made it type of thing, and you can see the winter Hell Week guys are not swollen. Right, they have no swelling of their their wrists, their elbows, their knees, their feet. Very little swelling because of that cold. The summer guys are really beat up. You can see the puffiness in their feet goes all the way down. You know, from their knees goes down to their calves and and feet. I mean, they look like Fred Flintstone feet. Right. They are really beat up. I'm wrist swollen. So I went through in the fall. So I didn't quite have the heat of the summer. Didn't quite have the coldness of the winter. But um, I remember my wrists were swollen. Elbows were swollen. Um, I scraped up pretty badly just from crawling and chafing. Um, my knees and feet were swollen. So I remember walking once it was all over, just going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And that that felt like I was walking on cushions and it hurt. Right. All the nerves in my feet were getting fired up because they were just getting squished by puffiness. So. You have that to look forward to if you decide not to go winter hell week. Either way, it sucks. So, um, it's up to you. Yeah, dive, combat dive for winter. Yeah, you're going to be cold. But but here's the thing. You know, I went through buds at uh, February, or I'm sorry, in uh, Hell Week in October. And my dive phase was all winter out there. And I had never been colder. I was never colder than dive phase at Bud's, mainly because it's December and January that we were diving, and probably first week of February, we finished diving, and that that was the coldest I've ever been at that time, for sure. So Hell Week is is cold, for sure, and dive phase is going to be cold. The thing, the trick on dive phase though, when it's that cold is there are thermoclines in the water. So you'll find when you start diving and you're doing, let's say you're doing a combat dive and you are have to travel a mile on scuba and you have a choice. How deep do you want to go? 
right? You can go 15 or 20 feet and be at a thermocline where the temperature drops 10 degrees and now you're swimming in 40 degree water where you can go up about 12 feet, 10, 12 feet and be at a thermocline where the temperature is like 52. So guess where we hovered the entire dive? And we knew when we dipped under that thermocline to get back up because it was going to be 10 degrees warmer and you could feel it. It was night and day. So um, if you're going to dive in the winter, just remember the thermoclines. You're going to be cold. It's going to take your breath away as soon as you jump in. You know, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of cold water exposure these days, which I think is probably going to be beneficial to them. Just learning how to breathe through it and relax in it. Um, all good stuff. So and therapeutic, you know, for swelling and things like that. All right. So any suggestion for doing push ups without wrist pain? Yes. In fact, um, what I would do is get some hexagon dumbbells. Right. So you're now grabbing the dumbbell instead of bending your wrist like this. You put that dumbbell right here, grab it around like this. And now look at my wrist. I'm, I'm holding on to it at the meat of my heel of my palm. Grab my fingers this way. So now my wrist is not bent like this trying to do a push up. It is actually near straight or maybe just a little bit bent versus 90. That is what I would do on doing push-ups. So you can do them on your fist, which is pretty hard, or you can grab onto two hexagon-type dumbbells that have a little more stability or push-up bars, and you can uh, do them on that. I think that will help you tremendously. Oh, yeah, my wawa thanks, Malwa, thanks you for the extra run mileage in the program. Uh, yeah, you know what? I got a beagle that thanks me for extra running. My beagle's a tough one, though, man. He's, I can't run him on the street or the sidewalk because he is always sniffing. So we actually run on trails in the woods, and he's, he's in heaven, just sniffing, chasing rabbits, squirrels. Got a hold of, almost got a hold of a duck the other day, jumped right into the pond. And it's freezing. It's like 45 degree water. So he didn't care. He was he was after one. Let's see. Um, I've missed my country buds program because of being medically dropped due to sinusitis. Ah, that sucks, man. Now I have more time to get in, get it even better and never quit. Yeah, hopefully you can, you know, work out those sinus issues. Um, it does matter, especially with diving. So it, it is challenging to uh, try to dive when you can't clear your ears um, using the Valsalva maneuver. You know, as you grab your nose and, and blow, and if your ears don't pop, you have sinus problems. You don't want to do it too hard because your ears can actually pop. So it's it's a slow exhale through your nose while you do that. Look it up, though. Don't. Don't just do it because I'm holding my nose and blowing. Uh, Val Salva, V A L S A L V A, Val Salva maneuver. Or take a scuba diving class and see how you do. How would you implement protein powder when to use it? Heard you mention Thorn a couple of times, never used it before. Yeah, I, I like Thorn stuff. I like uh, Ascent protein. Uh, the thing that I look for for protein powder is on the back, if it says supplement facts or if it says nutrition facts. If it says supplement facts in it, there's something else in there. It may be other things that they added that's completely healthy, but it's not considered food. If you get a protein source that's a powder like whey or case, casein or, or whatever, um, and it says nutrition facts on the back, it is actually considered a food. Um, that's why I like the Ascent protein, anything from Thorn. Thorn has some supplements added into it, but they're, they're grade A supplements. They're like pharmaceutical level supplements that are legal 
for like the U.S. Olympic team to use. That's how good they are. So look on, on that. I tend to do them um, in the mornings after my uh, first workout. Uh, sometimes I'll do one in the afternoon. Um, or I just eat a piece of chicken or steak with my lunch. And I usually count that as a, my protein source. But it really depends. If, if I'm missing out on protein, I will add protein. Um, so treat here, here's what I do. Treat those like kind of like an MRE. Like if I don't have a restaurant to go to or a house to cook, I will eat an MRE or some kind of supplement. Right. So same thing. Right. If you don't have good food, supplement, whether that's with nutrition fact level protein or it's protein with other elements in it might have creatine in it or, or whatever. But, you know, just be careful with taking too much of that, especially if you're doing a lot of sweating and endurance work in, in the hot, in the heat. It just uh, it has a way of dehydrating you. If you're, um, if you don't watch out, you got to super hydrate with that. So it, it, you know, just depends on what you're doing. So what is the best way to prepare for selection in the winter? Winter swimming, cold plunges, reduce your use of a coat. Um, you know, we work out outside all winter. So I think that has been something that just made us a little harder. I will say this, you know, 10 years ago and before COVID even, we would rarely go run outside when it was below 30 degrees. But as long as there's no ice out, we're running when it's 22 now. I mean, it doesn't matter. Basically, we're running just to stay warm because we're lifting and doing calisthenics outside in the cold. And uh, you, you just try to, instead of resting, doing nothing, sitting in a gym, looking at your phone, you actually need to keep moving when you're working out outside. So I, I have found that to be quite useful in uh, one, making you a little tougher for the cold, but also making it so you're not getting too cold while you're resting with lifts, gets you in a little bit better shape too, to uh, rest with running or rest with other activities that are, are basically an active rest um, to get through you know, the type of cold, but yeah, winter swimming, cold plunges. Sure. Absolutely. All great. Hey, Stu, will the new Navy SEAL PST program help me with improve my calculus? Uh -huh. Good question. Uh, super excited to start phase one of the program. No, it won't, but it may help you build some discipline to go train every day. And you can use that same discipline to go study every day and make sure you're practicing your calculus because a lot of those things, you know, it's, it's repetition, you know? So I, I took calculus one, two, three, and it sucked. So, but, uh, you just muscle through it. Keep practicing. Uh, how long do people usually serve in the teams? I recall from my days in reconnaissance and surveillance that jumping around with heavy gear was quite a strain on the body. Yeah, you know what? Um, I would say fewer people spend 20 years in the teams than uh, than, than get out. Um, probably six years is a good stopping point for a majority, but some will stay a little bit longer especially if they get into a uh, dev group. And then once they get to 10, it's a hard one to make that decision. They're like, do I stay in 10 more and retire or do I get out now? You know, I, I did eight and it was one of, or seven and a half really. And it was one of those uh, decisions that it was like, you know, either get out as a Lieutenant or make Admiral. Like there was no middle ground for me that made sense. Um, and then I had to just ask myself, did I have that commitment to stay in that long? And, uh, I did not. So, 
Yeah, I, w- I would say, you know, five to ten years. I mean, I, very few people get out after their first enlistment, but I, it may change after, you know, people aren't going to combat zones and they're doing deployments that are just, you know, bilateral training with other uh, allied forces in areas where it's just training. It, that may change people's desire to stay in. So it's kind of like the 90s when I was in right now. You know, there's a few places where you could go and probably do your job and see some actions of some sort. Um, but not necessarily. Even even Dev Group, you know, their their mission set has changed quite a bit as well. I'm only 23, but have a pretty gnarly varicose vein right in my left calf. Usually doesn't affect my training. When I'm on feet, would it? Would you get it removed? Yeah, uh, we had a guy that had varicose veins and got in, and I can't remember if he had to get it removed or not. I think he might have had to. Um, but you know, that's something you can Google, um, medical conditions that prevent you from joining. In fact, let me see if I can find it. There's a great article, medical conditions, military service. I think it's on military.com. Actually, I did not write it. Boom, here it is. So disqualifiers, medical conditions, uh, medical conditions that keep you from joining the Navy or military. Check this out. Now, this is a, a big list. It is, there's a lot in here to go through, but don't be concerned about one saying that it it is uh, uh, disqualifying. Because there's a lot of things that are disqualifying, but require a waiver. So, for instance, like LASIK and PRK surgeries are disqualifying. You need a waiver to get in to the Navy. But that waiver is almost 100% given as long as you meet the standards of that uh, medical evaluation and the eyesight standards. So... Don't read too much into it uh, to a point where um, it discourages you from going. Find out for sure from the MEPS doctors if it actually um, prohibits you from joining. I'm only 23, but have a pretty... Oh, I already answered that one. Um, I've done an MRI on my sinuses, and they're pretty bad. Now I'm hoping that I can get solved by surgery. You know, I've seen a lot of people do that, and it works. So it's a gnarly surgery, though, and recovery will take a little time, um, and you can return to workouts. But it, it'll be some gross um, mornings for you for a few weeks after that surgery, just a bunch of sinus drainage that's going to help you cl- get cleared out. Yeah. But yeah, check out that. If you're if you got a medical condition, check out that article. By all means, it's not a hundred percent. You know, that it that may miss some stuff out, you know, miss some things out of there. But it's pretty thorough. You can see it pretty much goes from head to toe and everything in between of what is medically disqualifying. So yeah, check that out. Oh, okay. Um, any more questions? Because I do need to go a little bit early today. I got some uh, stuff I got to do. I'm about to write an article. Um, got uh, some coaching at the Naval Academy I'm going to do. And um, got another meeting with some folks from out of town. But we got, uh, I'll answer questions as they come in. I got about five minutes. So let's see if we can do it. How do you go about losing 50, 60 pounds of body fat due to sedentary lifestyle at 26? I want to be a PJ, but uh, made some bad life choices. Hey, um, 
it's not impossible. I just had a guy lose 80 pounds and become an army ranger. Now, when I say just, it took him a year to lose 80 pounds. It took him another year to get in shape for the rangers. Um, now, he was getting in shape and losing weight at the same time, but it was not to the level that he needed to be. He was in basically zero shape and got into beginner shape. Um, you know, while he lost that 80 pounds, then he, uh, he got into advanced level shape and became an army ranger. So th those are some really inspiring moments for me. You know, I, I get a lot out of helping people, you know, go from 10 pull-ups to 20 pull-ups and run a six minute mile from a seven minute mile. But, you know, there's nothing quite like seeing somebody change their life lose 80 to 100 pounds and then be able to go serve when you know a year ago that was completely out of the question you know so be patient Cade and just start moving more eating less you got to build some good habits just like you got some bad habits of being sedentary you got to replace those bad habits with good habits um, I will say this there's you know any goal is about two habits, one you have to start and one you have to replace. In fact, I wrote an article on that that explains it a little bit better. Not quite sure where it is. Hmm. Habit of persistence. Let's see if this is it. This might work. This might help you. It's all about building habits of being consistent, persistent with your activities. You know, take out the bad, bring in the good, and keep moving. Eat less. You know, or eat better. It's probably a better way to say that. I once saw a documentary on Australian SAS. Yeah, they're they're tough. There's an instructor. And made the selection process at 55. Wow. Do the age requirements make sense for the teams? Um, That's a good question. Probably not. I mean, I've seen guys in their mid-30s, even late 30s, make it through BUDS. In fact, one of my friends is a 38-year-old BUDS graduate. Spent 20 years in. <clears throat> he was in for like 10 years before he went to BUDS, I think, or eight years before he went to BUDS. So. Um, it can happen, but it's just, it tends to be more of a younger man's job, to be honest with you. And most of the operational things are done by 20 year olds, 30 year olds. And, uh, there comes a point when those operators become more instructors and teachers of the younger generation, leaving it better than they, uh, found it. And the, the younger guys tend to do more operational stuff, whether that's officer or enlisted. Now, there, there have been some 40, even 50-year-old Master Chiefs still on, on ops and getting things done. Pretty impressive. But, you know, as a, as a whole, generically speaking, or as a, as, a, and as a whole, it tends to be a younger operator. But there are some exceptions for sure. Usually those guys are few and far between. Thought I'd share this in case it, it helps someone. I had my blood work done recently and it showed I was very low on vitamin D. Started taking D supplement and after a few weeks I have more energy. Pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, I take vitamin D every, every uh, morning. In fact, it's upstairs. <clears throat> Let's see, starting your 45-day beginner program. That's a great place to start. And follow that little food plan in there, too. Might give you some ideas for eating to lose weight as well. Hey, I'm trying to get a faster run time and swim. Wonder if uh, I should follow the PST week schedule or should I keep using your cows and cardio book to get in better shape? Uh, you know what? It depends. Both of those work. Um, 
you know, it just depends on your level of fitness. I found that the Cows and Cardio book has a really good intermediate, also has a great beginner program in there, Cade. So consider that Cows and Cardio, uh, after you do that 45-day beginner plan, you, you may like that. There's an intermediate plan in there. There's an advanced program in there. In fact, I've had some guys crush the PST just doing that Cows and Cardio workout. So it is capable of getting you there. Um, it's just, uh, it's a little longer workout. I think it's like 18 weeks by the time you go from kind of beginner, intermediate, advanced, uh, maybe a little more even. Um, but yeah, the Navy SEAL phase one, uh, PST or sorry, not Navy SEAL, Navy PST phase one is really for crushing that PST. It specifically addresses the events of that PST on a systematic uh, method that is going to help you crush that fitness test, as well as some of the other events that you will see in your pipeline, such as treading and drown proofing and, uh, you know, whether it's dive school or whatever, that's kind of what it's built around towards some of the water competency of the Navy. So there's a lot of swimming in there, uh, but there's also running, there's rucking, there's high rep calisthenics, there's a little bit of lifting in there, but it's mainly focused on building muscle stamina and endurance to help you crush that PSD. And then phase two, three is really about getting through selections. It's crushing. Thank you for everything. Uh, well, thank you very much. I thought there's 28 year limit to get into buds. Yes, there is. But as with medical issues, there are also age waivers, also criminal waivers, if you can pull it off. So just saw 234 is interesting insight into buds. First phase, they showed no pool evolutions. How much swimming in first phase since dive phase is after a lot of swimming. You will swim significantly. You'll do and you'll take tests too. You'll do a two mile ocean swim every week. You'll do the drown proofing test. You'll do the uh, 50 meter underwater test. You'll do life saving test. You'll do the knot tying underwater knot tying test on a breath hold. There's a lot of swim in there and a lot of skills that you have to master in that first phase. So first phase is legit in the water as well. Diving is even takes it to another level. All right, so if I missed any of your questions, please feel free to um, just email me, stu at stusmith.com. Happy to answer them. You can send your videos there as well, um, or you can DM me um, your, at Instagram your video. Uh, you can send them with fins or without fins. Happy to do both. Todd asks, which ones, rocket or jet fins? I personally like jet fins better. But either one, um, you know, you, you can look around on the internet and see if you can find some. I've seen some people buy some pretty good deals on eBay or local um, local Facebook marketplace. Um, some of my guys have, have found some that way as well. So, all right, folks. Well, I got to go. I hope you guys are well. Keep uh, pushing hard, and I will be back tomorrow, and um, we'll do a little swimming discussion, talk about some swim videos as well. So bring your questions. Happy to answer them tomorrow, or email me if you can't make it. We'll chat with you later. Have a good one.